coming to an orbit 22,000 miles from you goes our the next generation weather satellite better faster advanced resolution four times greater coverage five times faster Tornado warning time increased. Hurricane tracking improved. Solar flare monitoring enhanced like never before. Real-time mapping of lightning. 16 channel imager. Volcanic cloud and fog detection. Automated mapping of solar activity and more. The future of weather forecasting is coming. We all know that NOAA satellites help us forecast weather on Earth. But did you know that some weather satellites also forecast weather in space? So why is forecasting space weather important? The changing environmental conditions from the sun's atmosphere are known as space weather. Space weather is caused by electromagnetic radiation and charged particles being released from solar storms. Changes in the magnetic fields and a continuous flow of solar particles during a powerful storm headed to Earth could cause disruption in communications and result in exposure to dangerous radiation. Space weather can disrupt high frequency radio communications used by pilots. During geomagnetic storms, airplanes flying over the poles are diverted or rerouted so they don't lose critical positioning and communication with air traffic control. Nowadays, farmers rely strongly on high-precision GPS satellites to determine what to plant and where to plant it. If GPS technology is affected by space weather, it could produce faulty coordinates, resulting in losses for farmers. During a solar storm, satellite TV, satellite radio, and other satellite-based communications are at risk. Satellite operators have to avoid certain operations, like loading new software or executing complicated maneuvers because the data could be corrupted or the entire satellite could even be damaged. Electric power workers are also affected by space weather because large storms can induce currents in the electrical grid, overloading transformers and causing massive blackouts. Space weather can also bring damaging radiation to astronauts in space. Astronauts need to know when they should avoid spacewalks and stay in better shielded areas of the International Space Station. Early warning for these users is absolutely critical, which is why scientists and forecasters monitor GOES and other satellite data around the clock. The next generation of GOES weather satellites will provide the improved data that space weather forecasters need to detect initial solar flare eruptions and issue critical early warnings. GOES-R data will also help forecasters measure radiation from the storm and determine the final impact. Loaded with improved space weather instruments, the GOES-R series of satellites will provide continuous delivery of crucial information to all users impacted by weather, not only here on Earth, but also in space. On the research front, we're working continually to better understand the actual physics, the science, of uh, how severe thunderstorms become tornadic, what conditions make that happen. Another part of the problem, of course, is to be alert and aware and tracking these things and able to monitor them and generate the forecasts and warnings. For that, we're working very closely with our partners at NASA. We've got an important new satellite asset called GOES-R. 
This satellite will sit about 22,000 miles above the Earth. You'll be able to take a picture of the entire face of the Earth at once, see the entire country in a single view. When you have a severe thunderstorm mass developed, a big convective lump, one of the really important things to do is monitor the top of that where you can really see the, the symptoms, see the bubbles literally of the boiling thunderstorm masses in the atmosphere. Geostationary satellites are ideal for that. They can watch the entire country at once. When a big mass of convective activity gets developed, they can zoom in and scan that more rapidly. Having those satellite visible imagery, at least for myself, operationally in the field is, is very important. In fact, I use it exclusively trying to find a thunderstorm initiation because boiling cumulus that's seen from space is the best sign of instability. So GO satellite gives us a heads up even before radar sees it. Very importantly, today's satellite that does that takes about 30 minutes to make one of those complete pictures. Our new satellite GOES-R will be able to take one of those pictures in five minutes. For forecasters on the professional desks, that'll be tremendously valuable, helping them track where are they moving, how fast are they moving, which ones do I need to scan more closely with radar, and watch for the conditions that tell me I should put out a tornado watch or warning. Really important for cueing, for triggering, for alerting both our forecasters and the communities that they serve. Unfortunately, it's not the case that one outbreak is a clue for exactly what's happening uh, next in a season or in any particular area. We do know we're heading towards the heart of tornado season for 2012, even if we can't know those specifics. So what that really tells all of us living in this country is pay attention, here comes the heavy season, uh, get your plan out, dust it off, make sure you're ready to take timely action if you've got severe storms in your area. Having a plan of action when you're when you hear a tornado warning, you know, practice with your family, take cover, know what to do, I think is the most important thing. This very summer in our central region, five of our forecast offices are experimenting with different ways of communicating, almost more like text message. Cut to the chase, tag something right away, tornado tornado sighting on radar, tornado damage potential significant, that really signals more abruptly to people. This is important, get out of the way. Since I was a kid, I've always been interested in storms. As an engineer, I try to understand how things work. So I actually built and designed a device to measure the weather, basically, on the inside of a tornado. The United States, on average, gets about 1,200 tornadoes per year. And the reason is, is because of its unique geographic location. You got the Gulf of Mexico off to the south, and these storm systems as they pass through draw this gulf moisture as water vapor it comes right up through the midwest 
And springtime generally reflects a very, what we call a very active jet stream. And it, and it brings this uh, very powerful winds uh, that just comes right across the Midwest. That in combination allows these big storm systems to develop and of course wind shear is a very powerful ingredient for tornadoes. The ingredients for a tornado obviously are quite complex, but some of the basics are you, know, you have to have moisture, you have to have lift, and then the most, other most important ingredient is what they call wind shear. And shear creates these big horizontal rolls in the atmosphere. And then when a thunderstorm forms underneath it, it actually tips these, these horizontal rolls in the vertical position to where a thunderstorm forms over them, you have the whole thunderstorm rotating. Those final processes are what we're trying to study. You know, what's bringing the rotation finally all the way to the ground? And that's really one of the biggest mysteries of tornado formation. You know, it's very difficult to forecast where a tornado is going to be. When we're actually in the field waiting for thunderstorms to develop, we use what they call visible satellite imagery. This is basically a picture from space uh, showing the best areas, what we call instability. And that's how and where we are able to target these storms that are developing. Ground-based radar can't even see these storms develop, but satellite can. Satellites also detect what we call boundaries. These boundaries left over from old thunderstorms become the focus of new thunderstorms during the day and actually enhance the tornado potential. Visible satellite technology allows us to identify this which otherwise would be going totally unnoticed and undetected. One of the biggest things that I would love to see in future uh, satellite technology is the ability to actually see lightning uh, within the cloud tops. All the vertical motion and so forth greatly enhances its ability to create lightning. This lightning mapping will actually show frequency. If the storm is becoming severe, the lightning frequency increases and thus be able to do an early detection of whether or not that storm is severe or not. If we knew more about tornado genesis and structure, and we're able to stretch that warning out to 20 or 25 minutes. Right now, the average time is about 15 minutes or so. That gives people more time to prepare and seek shelter. Without the GOES satellite, we would be back in the dark ages of the mid to early 60s. These GOES satellites are responsible, in my opinion, for saving many, many thousands of lives.